Hello, everyone, and welcome. We'll just wait a couple of seconds as the room populates. All right, um, hello and welcome to this, the 78th meeting of the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Review Committee. My name is Melanie O'Brien and I am the designated federal official to the review committee. I'd like to welcome the review committee members, National NAGPRA program staff and all of you in attendance today. I'm pleased that these virtual meeting formats have allowed so many of you to join us. This is the fourth in a series of scheduled meetings. The meeting schedule is available on the National NAGPRA program events page. There's a link to that in the chat. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. The recording, transcripts, and meeting minutes will be made publicly available after this meeting and will include the names of those in attendance today. If you object to this, you may disconnect at this time. Before we begin, um, let me start with a brief introduction to this meeting. Uh, this is a meeting of a federal advisory committee established by the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, or NAGPRA, of 1990. And this meeting is regulated by the Federal Advisory Committee Act, or FACA, and its implementing regulations. This meeting was noticed in the Federal Register on December 10th, 2021. An agenda for this meeting, as well as materials, are posted to the NAGPRA program events page. Again, there's a link in the chat. The charter for this committee governs the objectives and scope of activities. The purpose of this review committee is to monitor and review the implementation of the inventory and identification process and repatriation activities under sections five, six, and seven of the act. The review committee is also responsible for reporting to Congress on progress and barriers encountered in carrying out its responsibilities. With that as introduction, I'd like to start with a roll call of the committee members. Please answer out loud. John Beaver. Present. Honor Keeler. Present. Barnaby Lewis. Present. Tim McEwen. Present. Frank McManaman. Present. Shelby Tisdale. Present. Currently, the review committee only has six appointed members. The charter for the review committee does not contain a quorum requirement, and a meeting may be held with fewer than seven members present. FACA requires committee membership be fairly balanced in terms of points of view represented and functions to be performed. As the designated federal official, I have determined that this meeting can proceed with only six members present. Frank McManaman was selected as chair of this committee. Mr. Chair, I hereby call this meeting to order. Yes, let's do that. Okay. Um, would you like to begin, um, before we start on our agenda items today, would you like to start with an invocation or traditional welcome? Yes, that would be terrific. And uh, Barnaby uh, Lewis has agreed to uh, lead off with that uh, traditional opening. Thank you, thank you, Barnaby. Thank you. I just wanted to say that uh, in earlier meetings, I had expressed our protocol, our cultural protocol related to providing bears at various events and activities. And I appreciate uh, the chair, review committee chair, for making those requests to me in prior, uh, prior to the meetings. So I appreciate him honoring our, our way of life. So this, uh, today we want to ask the creator for his blessing on this meeting to be with us and oversee our discussions as we all hope to get good feelings at the outcome of our, our meeting here as we hope to achieve some accomplishments in, in towards our duties and responsibilities. And I always do this in the language that the creator gave us, the Atham language. And also, I turn off the video. Senator Damatida, the Yidan Tashkiju, Hitan, the Gibun, the Gampacha, the Dam, Yeda, Homapik, 
Okay, thank you. Barnaby, thank you very much for that uh, that uh, opening prayer and for um, your your spirit and perspective on uh, giving us some um, good good beginning to the meeting. Thank you. Uh, um, Matt, Mr. Do you do you want to just review the? I'm sorry. I I go ahead. Um, just before the first agenda item, um, I would like to take an opportunity to acknowledge the folks that are assisting me in conducting this meeting today. Um, with me are yes. attorneys from the Department of the Interior Office of the Solicitor, Brady Blasco with the Division of Parks and Wildlife, mm -hmm. and Stephen Simpson with the Division of Indian Affairs. From the National NAGPRA program, Lisa Koshelski is the review committee coordinator responsible for organizing this meeting and preparing minutes and transcripts of these proceedings. Other members of the National NAGPRA program staff are in attendance today, and I greatly appreciate their support as well as those others within the Department of the Interior who have assisted me in preparing for this meeting. A special note of thanks today to Sarah Glass, the Notice and Grants Coordinator for the National NAGPRA Program. Tomorrow will be Sarah's last day with the National NAGPRA Program after nearly six years of dedicated service. Sarah's first week with National NAGPRA was in 2016, and it was the same week the review committee met in Missoula, Montana. So it seems fitting that we're seeing Sarah off with another review committee meeting. On behalf of the entire NAGPRA community, especially myself, as well as the review committee, I want to express, express our deep gratitude to Sarah for her patience, kindness, and deep commitment to this work of repatriation. We will all miss you greatly. Before we begin with the agenda, I would like to inform the committee as well as the audience that we have recently updated the agenda and materials for this meeting. You can find both on the NAGPRA program events page. There's a link in the chat. The committee has provided me with a compilation of comments on, their dra on the draft regulations, which have been updated this morning and added to the meeting materials. Um, I also updated the agendas. As you requested at your last meeting, I've added two opportunities on the agenda for public comment um, at each of the next three meetings. Uh, in addition, you have one disposition request, um, which you will hear today, and uh, it will be the first item on the agenda. We will have public comment following that, then a discussion of the review committee's um, work on the regulations, followed by additional time for public comment. In addition, uh, I have had two requests for presentations and scheduled one at each of the next two meetings. So there are no presentations scheduled for today, only the disposition request. I would like to note for the audience, the review committee is very interested in receiving comments on progress made and barriers encountered in implementing NAGPRA. If you're interested in providing a public comment during this meeting or at future meetings, please let me know when I ask for public comment at that time, I will turn on the chat feature, uh, or you can raise your hand and request a time to make public comment. You can also email me at nagpra underscore info at nps.gov. So with that, uh, we can move to the first agenda item, which will be the disposition request. It will take me just a minute to pull in the presenters for you. While you're doing that, let me, um, on behalf of the review committee also, wish uh, Sarah Glass the very best and thank her for her um, 
services uh, with the program and for the information that she's uh, willingly and professionally provided us when we've requested it from, from her. And in general, thanks to the other uh, National Park Service and Department of Interior um, staff who are helping with, uh, with the uh, review committee's business. Thank you all. Hello, um, yes, I, I'm allowing um, the National Park Service um, staff to be able to turn on their video and audio. We can see, um, yes, we can see you there. Um, uh, Kim, you should be able to turn on your video and audio. And Sharon, you should be able to turn on your video and audio. Sharon is actually right beside us, so if we're okay with Sharon. Oh, okay. Um, let me. And. Um, Kim, I'm not seeing um, any of the tribal representatives in the that ND list. Chester is in the lower corner, he was. Yes. I'm on the, I'm in the Sharon's name. Yes, this I see Chester, that. This is Chester White, man. Wonderful, thank you so much. So uh, the, the first item on the agenda today is a request from the National Park Service, Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. I think we have everyone with us, so I will turn it over um, to the National Park Service staff. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the review committee. My name is Kim Greenwood, and I'm the Intermountain Region Cultural Anthropologist for the National Park Service. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you today to present this case and hopefully receive your recommendation for a path forward to place this ancestor at rest. Mary Carroll, Program Manager for Park NACRA, and I have advised this wonderful team from Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument in their efforts to properly follow the law and to fulfill and to fully consult with 19 tribes on their efforts. The region supports this request as proposed. Please let me introduce the team that will outline the case and the proposed disposition for your consideration. Mr. Wayne Challoner is the superintendent for the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. Sharon Small is the museum curator for Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. Erin Bryan, is the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Crow Tribe. Mr. Chester Whiteman is a Tribal Elder from Southern Cheyenne. And Mr. Fred Mosquero is a Tribal Elder from Southern Arapaho. Mr. Challoner, Superintendent of Little Bighorn National Monument will begin with his statement. Thank you, Kim. Mr. Chairman and members of the review committee, Thank you for the opportunity to come before you today to propose the disposition of the unaffiliated individual in control of the National Park Service to the Crow Tribe of Montana. Before describing the specifics of our request, I want to acknowledge that the process has taken far longer than it should have. This individual was received by the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument in 1996. As I will describe shortly, the monument initiated consultation right away and developed an agreement to transfer the individual to the Crow tribe. However, due to staff changes, the 
repatriation did not immediately occur. And the loss of institutional knowledge and memory uh, caused further delay. When the culturally unidentified regulation at 43 CFR 10.11 was finalized, which implemented the geographically based process for the disposition of remains that cannot be con connected by be culturally affiliated, the monument needed to make sure that its actions complied with those regulations. After learning that 43 CFR 10.11 does not apply in this situation, we are also advised that the approval for the proposed disposition would be required from the Secretary of the Interior through a request for a recommendation from the review committee, which is why we are here today. Unfortunately, despite hard work by NPS and tribal partners, the path to this point has taken us longer than we had hoped. The remains of this individual were transferred to the Little Bighorn Battlefield on June 7th, 1996 by the South Dakota State Archaeological Research Center. They received those remains from the South Dakota Indian Affairs Office on May 28th of 1996. They actually received the remains by an anonymous um, donation from Longmont, Colorado on May 22nd, 1996, with a tag that read, attention, Little Bighorn remains. No additional evidence was provided regarding the geographic origin of this human remains, and no objects were included with the remains. The tag is the only thing that we have to work off of. To proceed under NAGPRA and at the request of the tribes present, um, that presented during the tribal consultation on August 20th in 1996. The monument sent the individual to a Dr. P. Wiley, California State University of Chico, California, for a non-destructive analysis to determine if the remains were of Native American origin. Dr. Wiley completed the report in September of 1996, stating that the cranial observations suggest a person of Asian or Native American descent, particularly the facial skeletons and some dental features. He went on to state, all indications suggest that the individual is Native American. Staff at the monument continued tribal consultation to determine disposition of the individual under NAGPRA. 19 tribes are traditionally associated with this park. Rarely are all of these tribes represented at each tribal consultation meeting. Therefore, discussions about the individual occurred seven times. Then the park state staff made calls, sent emails to garner letters of support for inclusion in the packet for the review committee. I would ask that you re review or refer to that packet to meet the participants' lists and the letters regarding the disposition of the individual. In particular, I would like to highlight two actions by the tribes. In 1997, there was a memorandum of agreement that was developed and signed by the tribal representatives associated with the park to address culturally unaffiliated human remains, stating the following. Private donations for the remains received through private donations and identified as American Indian in origin, it's agreed by the undersigned Niagara delegates that the Crow tribe shall be receiver of those remains. Although the MOA was developed and signed prior to the issuance of the regulation and was a blanket decision for all unaffiliated remains, the NAGPRA, NAGPRA regulation since promulgated required each case to be individually determined. The intent of the signers to the MOA remained consistent as demonstrated by the subsequent decision through consultation. And I'll point out that on a second instance in 2019, when the tribe discussed, they also went into executive session and then they reaffirmed their decision and support for the Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument to transfer the control of the individual to the Crow tribe of Montana. As you can see, since 1996, the tribes have been steadfast in their support of the Crow tribe of Montana. And the Crow tribe of Montana has accepted that responsibility to claim this individual through NAGPRA. It's time to put this individual to rest. Please support our request. Mr. Aaron Brin, 
Crow Tribe Tippo is here today, so we pointed to him earlier, representing the Crow Tribe of Montana. Mr. Chester Whit, uh, Whiteman and Fred Mosquita, also from Southern Arapaho and Southern Cheyenne, are here for support of this request. I defer them, defer to them for additional comments before taking any questions. For right now, I would like to introduce, uh, take this time to turn over the floor to Mr. Aaron Brin, Pro Tribe of Montana Tippo. The camera will go to you as soon as you start talking. <clears throat> Hello, thanks for having me. Um, I guess what I'd just like to first off say is um, we accept the responsibility to uh, take the remains as we believe it's the responsibility of all native people to to um, find homes for for these individuals and they shouldn't be in limbo so we gladly accept it and we um we have plans to conduct that this summer so thank you that's all i have to say thank you Aaron. i would now like to ask if chester chester would you like to have any words of support Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, Chester. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, you know, this NAGPRA, NAGPRA committee got started back in the 90s. And today, as we speak, one of the pioneers that put this NAGPRA, NAGPRA together was uh, a gentleman by the name of Lawrence Hart. And today they they laid Mr. Hart to rest. So he was he was one of the early pioneers of creating this NAGPRA organization. Um, and I want to I want to support the Crow tribe on getting our ancestor taken care of. This ancestor has been wandering around here on this land for 20 plus years that we know of. And they see how things are today. And they want they want to cross over. They want to meet their other relatives that are waiting for them. We need to get this individual reinterred so they can complete their journey to the other side. So with that, I, I commend the Crow, Crow Tribe for stepping up and taking responsibility for this our ancestor and to take care of them in a, in a way that they know. Support it wholeheartedly. We need this done so we can move on and create bigger and better things for the NAGPRA and for the National Park Service. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Chester, for your kind words of support. I'm not sure if Fred has joined us. So, Melanie, have you seen Fred online or have you heard from him? He was having some concerns this morning. Um, no, I, I, I don't see him. Okay. Let me let me take up for Fred. He's he's in the hospital. He had surgery the other day, so. Um, okay. More than likely, it was amazing. he won't come on board. Yeah, it was amazing. He chatted with us this morning. I think he was in the hospital, but he was trying to attend anyway. That was the dedication he was doing. Yeah. So I wanted to give him that opportunity. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Chester. I think if you're comfortable, I think we'll move on. Are you comfortable with Fred's position? Yes. Yes. Okay. At this time, I would like the review committee, I'd like to open it up for questions at this point in time, if we can answer some questions at all. Uh, uh, Honor, go ahead. 
you have your hand raised. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to acknowledge Lawrence Hart, um, and I'm sorry you all lost him. Thank you. So Thank you. I, I have a question um, and probably this one, it would be for uh, the Park Service staff. Uh, I noted in the uh, report that was provided, the osteological report that uh, uh, Dr. Willie from uh, Chico State um, wrote, there's uh, information about the, the cranium and the mandible, the, the, the bone elements that are part of this, um, uh, that represent the individual where, who we're talking about, um, that the characteristics uh, appear to be Native American, but um, may not be, or are not characteristic of the, of the plains, um, other, other skeletal material from from the plains, Native American skeletal material. Uh, so, is can you give us a little uh, sort of summary of, of the perspective on this and the uh, level of documentation that uh, that exists? Is the the report that we had access to the the basic documentation that's available and that presumably would be kept um, by the Park Service at least? as part of the record of the uh, of the uh, return of, of the remains. I don't know whether uh, uh, whether um, Kim or uh, Sharon or uh, Wayne want to uh, just just address that in a little more detail. So you're asking about if it may or may not have been uh, Native American from this area? Is that what the question is? Well, that's part of the question, yes. I wasn't sure what exactly the uh, physical anthropological assessment was. Was uh, There were general statements that this was the observation, but uh, are there measurements? And uh, I noted that there were photographs, although they're removed from the uh, the copy that we had access to. And I, I understand that, but, but uh, you know, that information should be preserved in some in some fashion. Um, the photographs. So the information I believe that we've submitted, um, I, you're referring to the document that's in the NAGPRA review document that we submitted. Yes, it's in the meeting materials. Yes, yes. So we had it, access to. Yep. So it's, you know, it was stating things like the forest uh, hyperosity suggests that it's, um, its origin is other than Little Bighorn region, that sort of question that you have, and what what actually documented it to say it was Native American? Yes, I guess I'm asking, did the, how did the Park Service review that that report and whether were there, were there are measurements associated with it as, as well as the photographs that, that led to the determination that, or the interpretation that this was a Native American individual, but not from the, uh, not characteristic of the kinds of um, osteological um, elements and things of that sort that that would would show that it was uh, that the individual was uh, from the local area. If I may, this is Kim Greenwood from the region, and yes, the report does have measurements in it because of sensitivity from some of the tribes, we have chosen to redact information from the copy of the report that will go public through this meeting. The park does have in its permanent records um, the report as well as the region has a copy of that report. Um, based upon our understanding of the NACRA law, what was important was that number one, the individual was Native American and number two, that the individual was in our custody. So therefore, we chose to proceed under NAGPRA and by having a professional provide us um, his information, we did not question his information. We used the information he provided in the report. Okay. 
Thank you. I, I, I just wanted to uh, affirm that that was my uh, understanding would be the way that you would would proceed. And I just wanted to make sure that that, in fact, was uh, was the way we we're proceeding. So I appreciate those details. Thank you. Are there are other comments or questions from review committee members. This is Barnaby. Uh, yes, Barnaby, please go ahead. I, I agree with the tribal representatives. I know that the ancestors should know when they wander this earth, they know where their home is. And they know that their descendants, you know, will work to get them home. And it's the spirits themselves that call attention to themselves to know that the tribes, the affiliated tribes will respond and bring them home. And so just because it doesn't fit the letter of any kind of criteria medically that a person might use to try to determine, you know, which tribe the ancestor is, that doesn't matter. As it was said, as long as they're Native Americans and that the um, tribal people, the representatives know that the ancestor is from their family. I agree with them that uh, this should be done with the recommendation for the well, Secretary of Interior to allow the ancestor to go to the Crow tribe for, for reburial. That's just my comment. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate that. If there aren't any other comments uh, or questions from the review committee members, uh, Madam DFO, do we need a motion or do we I just think Tim, say, Tim has his hand raised? Excuse me? Uh, Tim and Tim and oh. Honor both have Okay, I'm hand. sorry. I can't see you. I can't see you uh, uh, on my screen. Tim, why don't you go ahead and then Honor? Would that be okay? I'm sure. <clears throat> I sort of, uh, having looked through the file, um, the information that was provided by the Park Service, it seems to me that we have two bits of information that in some way are conflicting. One is the physical anthropologist has confirmed that these remains from their, from their analysis um, are Native American, but they, comparing to other samples, they have questions about whether they originated from Little Bighorn. And on the other hand, we have some unknown individual who went to some effort to send these to South Dakota with an identification that they were from the Little Bighorn. And while we can't question them because we don't know who they are, that was based on something. So we have two bits of conflicting information here. Thanks, thanks, Tim. Um, which doesn't necessarily mean that we we can't uh, in, endorse uh, recommend this particular repatriation. But you're right that, and that's I guess one of the reasons that we're we're asking these questions just to sort of confirm confirm the situation. Uh, Honor, would you go ahead with your your comment or question? Sure, thanks um, Tim and review committee members uh, for speaking earlier. Um, I noticed that this uh, issue came up in the 90s and here we are in 2022 um, looking at a repatriation that seems to be um, delayed quite a bit for the tribes uh, to occur. Have there been barriers um, that you would like to talk about that need improvement um, that have occurred over this long span of time for the tribes um, that the review committee might hear, hear about. Is that a question uh, first for one of the, one of the uh, panelists, Honor? Yes, if any of the tribal panelists 
would like to respond. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Curley has his. Uh, let me let me just let me just say something here. Um, you know this this individual or these ancestors that we're talking about. They've been passed around and everything like that. You know, they want to go home. You know, you, you need to look at your regulations. I mean. We're, we're trying to get this individual across to the other side. And regardless of which nation they come from, we're going to honor them the way we know how to honor them. And we need to get them reinterred so they can go on, so they can be at peace. And if you want to argue over or discuss over centimeters and pieces that you have, you know, the only way you can identify them if they have beadwork or some kind of affiliated articles with that individual. But today we don't have that. And we haven't had that. So I would ask the review committee to, Hello? to honor this ancestors Hello? request that's being made through us and reinter them so they can go on. We don't need to keep them here and re-examine, take pictures and this and that. They need to be reinterred. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whiteman. And and I uh, agree yeah. with you. I think we're we just want to make sure we know what the facts are and uh, I don't think anybody's disagreeing with with what you're what you're proposing or, or requesting, but thank you for uh, uh, your additional words on that. But oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, if there are yes, no, go ahead, Honor. There are no further comments. I would ask the review committee um, to provide. Oh, I see John Beaver. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Um, to provide um, a decision yeah, on this, well, and uh, it would be good if we could raise a motion for this position. Um, if there's no further discussion, we can do that. And I, oh, John, you have your hand up. Go ahead. But I think you're muted, John. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> if we're if we're it sounds like we're already there. Uh, I would like to make the motion to go ahead and I would to support uh, uh, this uh, the disposition or the what's been presented here to the review committee to support this and and get this uh, repatriation or this return uh, moved along in the in in the manner and the fashion in which it needs to to move to move forward. Okay, thank you. So we have two two committee members both uh, moving to do this. Uh, Shelby, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to second this motion, and I also would like to, on behalf of the review committee, um, to ask Mr. Whiteman to please send our condolences to Mr. Hart's family. Yes. Uh, so sorry to hear of his passing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, thank you for that as well. Um, Ma'am, do you know in terms of the, the protocol here and the, the, the steps, do we, we need a vote? Do we uh, declare we can, this unanimous? Yes, we, we can move forward with a unanimous consent as we did um, last time. Um, I would um, just ask if there are any objections um, to making this recommendation uh, to the Secretary of the Interior. No objection. No, I don't see any objections. Okay. Then um, yes, we can we can proceed with this uh, with this unanimous recommendation to the secretary. Great, let's do that. And uh, we want to thank all of the presenters uh, for both the written documentation that you provided early, and for uh, taking the time to come and 
and present uh, this in, in person at this public meeting. Um, I know there's always some uh, difficulties in getting together and getting the information together it takes time and effort. So we very much appreciate you doing that and thank you. And I hope the review committee's recommendation um, I, I, will satisfy the, uh, the legitimate needs that, that you're talking about and the interest you have. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And Mr. Whiteman, I would like to echo um, uh, our thanks for letting us know uh, about Lawrence Hart. Um, and just for everyone's information, Mr. Hart served for over seven years um, on the NAGPRA Review Committee from 1996 to 2003 and attended uh, 14 meetings of, of this NAGPRA Review Committee. And um, we certainly um, cherish the, the time and um, commitment that he provided to this committee. Um, right. as well as to all the work um, that he did um, to thank you this process. So yes. I, I will say that both Tim and I had the opportunity to know Lawrence and to work with him during that period of time. And he was, uh, he was a great colleague to have and very dedicated to the, uh, the work that's uh, being done, was done, being done then and is being done now. So thank you. Appreciate it. Madam DFO, have we accomplished our our mission in that that particular part of the agenda? Uh, yes, we have. Um, just take me a minute to uh, clear the stage, as it were. Okay, thank you. Act two coming up. All right. Um, so now we uh, have one of uh, two opportunities for public comment. Um, every meeting of the NAGPRA Review Committee um, includes time for public comment, uh, which is a requirement under the Federal Advisory Committee Act. Within the scope of NAGPRA, the Review Committee is most interested in receiving public comments on progress made and any bar barriers encountered in implementation of the repatriation activities under NAGPRA. If you are interested in providing a public comment um, during this meeting or at future meetings, you can raise your hand um, using the Zoom feature. You can also put your name into the chat to request public comment. I will note that the review committee um, can also accept written comment um, if you decide you'd like to make a public comment at a later um, time, you can submit that to the National NAGPRA program as a written comment. Again, this will be the first of two opportunities today to request public comment. So if you're, if you're considering it and you're not quite ready to commit, you have another opportunity in just a few minutes. Um, Mr. Chair, I do not see any hands raised or, or comments requesting public comment. Hey, Madam DFO, maybe then we should just go ahead and proceed on with our next agenda item. And we'll, as you say, we'll have an opportunity later um, to certainly comments again. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is a discussion of revisions to the regulations. Um, 
just as a, a reminder to everyone in the audience, um, we did post a, uh, a revised um, draft of the review committee's recommendations on the regulations this morning. So you can find that in the meeting materials. Okay, Madam Chair, maybe I could start with the kind of an introduction of where I think we are and then, and then we'll have a review, review committee, uh, more general discussion uh, about it. Um, at the, um, at the last two meetings of the review committee, we've discussed the uh, July 2021 version of the proposed draft revisions to the um, NAGPA regulations that the Department of Interior made public in August of, uh, or maybe it was July, I guess it was July. They were actually, um, that's what we call it, the July version. Um, uh, we had, um, we have developed a 22 or so page list of uh, comments and concerns that we have been working through systematically and that I, we will continue to work through systematically. But based on our first discussion, we um, came up with uh, a set of recommendations uh, for the very beginning of that document, the, the, the general comments that we had about the process and about the regulations and its impact and things of that sort. Uh, and then we began very uh, briefly to go into the specific comments. So the uh, current document is a refinement of the requests and uh, comments that we had at the about the very beginning of that longer uh, document, which uh, dealt with the entire uh, uh, range of the uh, uh, the, the July uh, draft proposed revisions. And that's really what we wanna talk about first uh, in today's discussion. So the document that's been recently posted was posted this morning and that the review committee uh, talked about an earlier version of at the February 28th meeting is what we have on the, on the table at this, at this particular moment. Um, the, um, the document uh, has a, a general introduction and suggestion that we might use this uh, text uh, to write to the Secretary of the Interior to raise some concerns that we have about the process and about some aspects of the, some general aspects of the, uh, the, the July 21st draft. And that's really what um, we're, we're looking at, at right now in the, 10, 10 March uh, a document. There are right now in the draft uh, four comments and requests. The document itself is about, is about four pages uh, long. Um, and the, the last page actually, as you can see from the drafting note that's there is of the text that would be related to specific uh, comments. So um, what I would ask the review committee to focus on is the first three pages of this uh, March 10th draft. And uh, with the idea that this text or however we, we choose to amend the text in this meeting um, would be used as a letter that the committee would send to the, the secretary uh, not in the absence of any further comments or uh, specific recommendations that would deal with specific sections, but as a general a general notion and to get try to get before the secretary uh, some of our, our concerns, a couple of which relate to uh, the timing of of actually uh, proposing uh, through the, the normal regulatory process. The, uh, the draft proposed uh, regulations uh, that Interior is, uh, is working on. Uh, that's kind of a clumsy, I'm sorry, summary of, of where I think we are, but um, I think our, our immediate purpose in the discussion today is to look at the first three pages of this uh, March 10th document and uh, say, yes, this is something we want to get the secretary to take a look at and take action on or we want to edit it in some manner 
uh, or, or something else. So with that uh, introduction, do review committee members have some comments that they'd like to make or uh, additional information they'd like to provide? And I'm afraid uh, with the screen sharing, I cannot see everybody's uh, hand. I can see uh, Shelby and John, uh, Honor and uh, Barnaby, but Tim, I can't see yours. So I can't tell if you've got your hand raised. Um, everybody else I can tell. And I don't see any immediate hands raised, but I'm sure you have thoughts on this. Well, let me quickly summarize maybe these, the, the four recommendations. Uh, and again, this is a document that we passed around among the individual review committee members uh, during the last, uh, well, since the last meeting. And um, the first recommendation uh, really is one that we've talked about uh, quite, uh, quite a bit, even before uh, we started our, our more systematic review of the, uh, the July draft, and that is that we think really more time is needed. The, we've heard from the, uh, uh, from the National Agri Program that the uh, it, department intends in the very near future to publish uh, something like the July uh, 2021 uh, 20, uh, draft uh, as part of a formal um, review uh, process. And, uh, I think our sense has been that more time is needed for, for discussions, that the review committee would appreciate more time for discussions and to hear from the different uh, parties, the different um, types of organizations that are involved in ensuring that NAGPRA is implemented uh, in, in both the spirit and the letter and the letter of the law. The second um, recommendation, which is starts at near the top of page two, uh, is to, again, uh, recommend, request that the secretary extend the time for tribal consultation, uh, even outside of the formal uh, review uh, process that uh, will uh, be gone through ultimately uh, for tribal consultation. And this is something that we've read in the, uh, the number of uh, tribal letters based on the tribal consultation that was held in the fall of last uh, last year with tribes and with Native Hawaiian organizations that uh, many of the tribes and the organizations that represent tribes have asked for additional consultation time uh, prior to uh, the uh, any any formal uh, regulatory process being initiated. So we're, we're clearly uh, in that recommendation in support of what other, uh, what the tribal groups have uh, uh, notified or, uh, sent to the uh, Department of Interior and the Secretary as to their, and what their views are on that. Um, the third recommendation, which is, uh, begins about midway down page two, um, recommends that in uh, addition to considering what changes in process and procedure and definitions, the uh, uh, draft proposed regulations call for, that um, consideration be given to what costs uh, might uh, be incurred to uh, change the procedures uh, in, in any change of the procedures, uh, not just by museums, but by tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations as well. Uh, in particular, those uh, tribes and uh, Native Hawaiian organizations that may not be as familiar with, as some are, with uh, the NAGPRA process itself as it currently, as it currently exists. Um, we regularly hear and past review committees have regularly heard from tribes, from museums, from public agencies that, that need to comply with the, with the statute and participate in the processes that there's insufficient staff, there's insufficient uh, financial resources to really carry out uh, the regulations. Uh, and everybody, I think, let's not say everybody, but um, I would say the, the vast majority of people that we hear from, or certainly that I've heard from in, in my observations is 
that people are trying to comply with the law in the spirit of it. And uh, that in some cases, there are long delays uh, in, in doing it. And in, in many instances, that's simply because people have a lot of work that they're doing uh, on NAGPRA and on, on other uh, responsibilities they have. And uh, it, this uh, may be a, a process that in order uh, to speed it up, if that's the intent, uh, needs some additional resources to make sure that in speeding it up, we don't um, step outside of what the spirit of, of, the, uh, of the, the law calls for and, and the kind of consultations, uh, the kind of cooperative uh, uh, agreements and relationships that um, we've heard about in, in, many, in many instances and that have succeeded in uh, implementing the statute. The final um, recommendation is uh, number four, which is uh, really occupies most of, of page three. And that really um, calls for some improvements to ensure effective implementation in any kind of way in which the NAGPRA procedures or definitions or other aspects of implementation uh, are, are carried out. And uh, these were some, uh, again, these are are topics that uh, the review committee has talked about in in many different in many different instances, and we've included them here uh, as uh, things that the secretary should also consider in within the context of developing a new set of, of regulations or in revising the existing set of uh, procedures and uh, activities that are required by the statute. And those. Uh, this draft um, uh, at the, the last meeting, at the 28th of uh, February meeting, uh, both Honor and I were asked to take some of the things we had talked about at that meeting and some of the uh, general comments and try to meld them together, do some wordsmithing. Uh, we did that, a, a version of that wordsmithed uh, version was circulated among the review committee. We got some additional comments, I've tried to incorporate those into this final document. But again, this is a, a working document and uh, we need to reach uh, some agreement with either to go forward with it or to make changes and go forward with it or to come up with some uh, uh, alternative um, approach uh, in this particular meeting we are having right now in the public, in the public, uh, uh, in the public space. So, um, Perhaps now some of the other committee members might, might comment. Do we go ahead? Do we make changes? Uh, what do you think? Um, Frank? Tim, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Now I can see you. Go ahead. OK. Um, I support the idea of, of, you, of uh, using the general comment section of this uh, and reforming it as a letter that the committee, I, I suspect you would sign it um, on our behalf and send it to the secretary and perhaps other officials within the department to express our concerns. Um, I'm actually fine with the way the text is written now. I do have one additional section that I would like to add, but I'll wait until the end once, once we deal with this, uh, the document as it stands now before I uh, introduce them. Thank you, Tim. Additional comments, please. John, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, before I get into the larger comments, I'm just looking at uh, the, I'll start with the first, well, we'll start with the first section. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the, the third, in the third paragraph. Again, it's about uh, the review committee requesting, uh, I guess, responses. Uh, and then I, I, and more so the last sentence of that third paragraph about the requesting copies of those responses and those, those responses of the initial uh, tribal comments. Uh, and I think that we might have covered some of this in, the, in, the, in our uh, last meeting on the 28th, I believe. Um, uh, and, uh, but it it's, been, it's been my understanding that uh, if we're talking about those uh, the tribal comments that were that they had received that the Park Service had had conducted those uh, with the with the tribes, but there were that there were a number of those those tribes who did have some concerns about some of that information, uh, 
being, you know, uh, how that was, you know, made made more public. Uh, and had heard, I think we had, had heard some concerns about that. And we'd also received some information in the last meeting that had said, or that, that had been passed along to us that uh, any of that information that, that if we were, if we're requesting that, then that, that information perhaps in, in totality would then become, a, would then become uh, open to the, open to the, to the public. And I'm, I want to address that because it sounds like we're, we're requesting that information uh, but we are, we've already uh, had some advisement about what that would mean. And I, at, at this stage, I would certainly not want to, if, if tribes have been specific about not having some of that information that they've, that they've sort of expressed and in those meetings with the Park Service about the, the regulations. And I feel like the, we should, at the review, review committee, I mean, we should honor that. And so, I mean, we've, we've certainly, we've had some uh, uh, tribal representatives in previous meetings who've said they're, they're okay with that and have shared that information. But there are others who perhaps are not or would not be okay with that. I would certainly would not want to go against those wishes or concerns. And just the, the way that that says that we're 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 requesting all of that, you know. And I, I would be concerned about that going against the the wishes of those communities and those tribal nations who have who who have said that they're not ready or perhaps don't want that information publicly uh, available right now. Thank you, John. Thank you. I remember this did this very issue did come up in that February 28th meeting. One of the, um, I thought one of the comments, and I'm not sure who made this comment, was that um, this particular paragraph uh, reflects a, an exchange that occurred at the um, Senate Indian Affairs Committee meeting uh, at the beginning of February. And uh, it was a res the response, um, the question was asked, of uh, the associate, associate director, uh, Joy Beasley of the Park Service about information from the consultation uh, meetings. I, I believe that was the, 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 uh, the, the context at, at that meeting. And I believe the uh, chair of the Senate um, committee in, in the course of that in, interaction and discussion uh, asked for copies of this or, or it may be that that uh, associate director Beasley actually said, uh, "Well, once we we've, we've put this information together, we would make it available. The Park Service would make it available to the the Senate committee. In which case, it would be it would it would become a public document in that in that context. And that may have been the reason that we left it in in that uh, that draft. But uh, can other review committee members recall that? And it may be that that I'm misremembering." Um, if, if I could just jump in. Yes, Madam DFO. So um, you are correct. The associate director um, stated that the department would provide responses to all tribal um, comments on the draft regulatory text in summary. Um, but those are that, that the, the, the associate director did not say that uh, the department would provide copies of those tribal comment letters. That is generally not the practice of the department. So um, what was she saying? She the A department. summary of the comments and uh, the department's responses to those comments. I see. Very uh, much like uh, a general, like, like other uh, preambles um, uh, to regulatory text that summarize the comments that had been received, the number of comments okay. that have been received on a certain topic, and then a response to that. Thank you. All right. So um, it may be that we want to just drop that that last uh, or that third paragraph of the uh, of this draft that we're looking at. Would there be any objection to to doing that by other members? Shelby, go ahead. Um, this is a question for Melanie. Um, would the summary of the tribal comments then be a public document? Or would we want to request a copy of that summary? It will be made public. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Tim, go ahead. Um, and this is for Melanie as well. Does a draft of that document currently exist?
um, uh, comments have been um, reviewed and collated um, into um, responses, but that is under review by the department. So the document exists, but it's a draft. Is that an accurate summary? The uh, tribal comments have been compiled and the department is considering the responses. Okay, so the, the, response, the responses are in the process of being put together. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, thank you. At some point that will become a public document. So, yes. Um, the department is committed to responding directly to all tribal um, comments on the draft text. Okay. So I asked the review committee again, with that additional information, do we, um, are, are the other members of, of the committee sufficiently supportive of the recommendation slash comment number one uh, in, the, in this draft with, if we were to take out the third paragraph? Um, Frank, this is Honor. Uh, it Honor, seems yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't see your hand. I, oh, there, okay, yes, please, go ahead. That's okay. It seems to me that the section in paragraph three that's under question, um, I think given the, the, the questions that have been asked, and please, you know, let me know if this is not the case, but uh, it may not be that we request a copy of these responses um, is the problematic section, but um, the, sec the portion and the sentence where it says, um, and of the initial tribal comments mm. on consultation yes. meetings, that phrase in there seems to be of question, um, maybe rather than this, um, draft or this eventually public document that will 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 come from Joy Beasley mm -hmm. um, rather than getting rid of the entire paragraph maybe maybe so we, you, you would suggest maybe a, a solution would be to retain the first uh, three and a half or so lines but um, anything that came after a copy of these responses we would edit out Potentially, yes. Okay, thank you. That's, that that's sense. maybe a good compromise. Would people agree with that, review committee members? John, go ahead. Uh, my, my question of what that would be, so if we're requesting a copy of the responses, so uh, uh, the DFO had mentioned that the department is currently working to send out letters. Is that what we're, and then what, is that what I'm hearing that, that we're asking? Or is still, are those letters still considered a, uh, a conversation between uh, you know, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship, conversation between uh, like a federal agency and that and that tribe, or is the content of that, or or would the content of, of those responses be considered a, a public document? So, you know, since it sounds like there there may be one-on-one uh, -on -one responses, so I'm just you know wondering, you know, is that is that for the is that for the, the review committee and the greater public's con, you know, uh, consumption at this, at this time, since those are con, uh, conce, conce, uh, conceivably one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations or discussions between uh, the uh, interior and, uh, and those specific tribes? A good question. Madam DFO, do you have an answer to that? The department will provide a public document that summarizes tribal consultation and provides direct responses to those um, comments. Uh, that will be a public document, but will not identify which tribes made which comments. So I think that's the document we're talking about here, John, it would be the one we'll be, we would be referring to. Okay, thanks. I would just, wait. I would just, uh, just for the, the clarification there. So thank you for that. Thank you. 
are there other comments on on this? If if not, let me make a suggestion. Then let me. Uh, why don't we take uh, honors um, suggestion and we would change that third paragraph and we would uh, eliminate any reference to us receiving or, or wanting copies of the initial tribal comments on consultation meetings. From there on, that that paragraph would be uh, deleted. That that part of that paragraph, the second second half or so. John, your hand is still up. Okay, but you, okay. Um, can we we agree to that? And and uh, are there any other? Tim, sorry, your your hands up. If um, if I could just put a finer point on the edit, um, I believe in the last full sentence of that paragraph. I think uh, I would recommend. Would why we want the why we want the response or we want a copy of the response correct i okay. think the deletion would be the phrase and of the initial tribal comments on the consulting on on the consultation meetings that that phrase would be deleted and that the remainder of the sentence to help us in carrying out our statutory responsibility to stealth, to consult with the development of NAGPRA regulations that would be retained Okay, that 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 sounds sensible to me. Also, John, how does that strike you? Uh, yes, I'm I'm good. I'm good with that. Good with that. Okay. Uh, I, I guess oh. uh, uh, just to, to Melanie's point, uh, then I mean, I guess I mean, and that I, I I'm not. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'll, I'll say it matters either way. But uh, and then so we're, we're requesting a copy of the, of those of those pub, which will then be public responses, right? Is that what I'm? Is that, what we're, is that what we're asking then? Which which would be the the, the department's public responses to the are you did you get your answer, John? I couldn't tell. Or, Melanie, do you have it? Yeah, yes, it sounds to me like what you're requesting is is the uh, responses that uh, Associate Director Beasley committed the department would be providing, and that will be a public document. Thank you. Uh, Honor, you have your hand up. Um, yes, thanks, Frank. I, I think that the difficulty we have in looking at this comment highlights uh, a problem of confidentiality uh, that exists in repatriation and in this process. Um, you know, on the one hand, we're saying, we don't want to um, go against what the tribes would hope would remain confidential in their consultation process. Uh, however, we know that through um, FOIA um, and through the ways that things are set up um, legally and with the federal government, uh, that people, the public can obtain uh, unfortunately obtained some of these records. And uh, I would hope that uh, in our comments in the future to the secretary, as well as to um, Congress, that we again highlight the importance of confidentiality um, so that we don't run into this problem again. Uh, as the review committee, I think we're trying to honor um, these requests by tribes, but again, it's almost um, it's almost something that that we might do as a committee, uh, but isn't isn't a reality. And so I hope that in the future, uh, there are efforts made by the Secretary of the Interior and by Congress uh, to maintain confidentiality. Um, in the consultation process. Um, on the other hand, uh, which I think that these comments reflect particularly in number four, is that we have an issue of government-to-government uh, -government consultation with tribes as a review committee um, 
to hear, to ensure that tribes are notified of our meetings and that we are hearing a broad spectrum uh, of opinions coming through in our review committee meetings. And so uh, to some extent, we're at a disadvantage to be commenting um, here fully uh, on these draft regulations. And um, I hope that we take that under consideration as we're looking at the rest of this letter, uh, but in with the spirit also of improving uh, this process and these mechanisms going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Honor. Thank you. Good, good thought. Um, Barnaby, I can't see um, a picture of you or uh, your name on on the the uh, side of my screen, but I, I wanted to see if you had any comments on this particular topic before we move to the next one. I would have no objection to just removing the whole paragraph as was originally uh, considered. I I don't know if uh, you know the committee's receiving tribal comments would you know just burden our our time and review mm. just prolong the the process. Mm -hmm. So. I just personally don't see any, um, what I call it, any any good result from it. Okay, all right. Um, would would you object if if the shorter edit uh, were what the committee um, decided to to go with? In other words, removing the any reference to the uh, initial tribal comments. No objection, and it's all up to the Secretary of Interior how they uh, respond to these comments and requests. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Barnaby, I appreciate that. Any, any other uh, comments on this? Shelby, go ahead. Um, maybe what we could say um, in that second sentence is just something to the effect. Uh, we look forward to seeing the, the summary of tribal comments and the department's responses. Um, and, and something to in terms of how that'll assist us in carrying out our responsibilities or something like that. Mm -hmm especially since that's going to be a public document. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and I, um, that I, it could be, uh, it could be certainly be edited that way to uh, make it seem less like a demand and more like we're, we're we, you know, we hope that, that that's gonna happen and, and this document will be available and we could make use of it or not, depending upon, you know, what's, what's in it, individual members could, um, you know, absorb it and, and uh, there may be some things in that that would be useful for our comments on the specific uh, section. Um, if we, if we, if we agree to um, move forward and uh, we do a little bit of wordsmithing on it so that we have something in here uh, on this and, and I think Tim's point about you know, hearkening back to uh, why we want this, why we think this might be useful. Uh, not saying we're definitely going to use it, but that it, it would be something that may be useful for our, our own uh, purposes as we move farther into the uh, review of the specifics, uh, specific points that we've got to go through yet. If, if everybody would agree with that, then I'd suggest we go ahead and uh, move to the second recommendation. If I, I guess if I don't see any objections or any further hand raised, hands raised for discussion, why don't we why don't we do that and move on to the second recommendation, the text of the second recommendation on page two. Okay. I Tim, I can't see you, but I'm I'm assuming that's okay with you based upon your your initial comment about uh, the, the text overall. 
Okay, then if we turn to page two, the first, uh, there, are, there are two paragraphs uh, here that these actually combine uh, two of the recommendations we had on the original version of this that we discussed about the, we discussed on the uh, at our meeting on the twenty the twenty eighth. Uh, Honor, you actually did the wordsmithing on this one. Do you want to say anything in addition about it? Hi, thanks, Frank. Um, there's not too much that's been uh, changed here. I think probably in that second paragraph we should. Um, oh, let me see, there was a recommends in there that I wanted to change over, but it may have been done. Um, it was just combining uh, the two comments like we had discussed in the last meeting uh, into one longer comment about extending the tribal consultation period and ensuring that there's opportunity uh, for Native American spiritual leaders uh, to also comment on the draft regulations. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Honor. So comments from uh, other review committee members on this? Does this look, um, does this everybody agree with going forward with this as a recommendation, a general recommendation to the secretary? John, go ahead. Oh, you know. Okay, there we go. There you uh, go. I think I'm going back to our discussion, back to our, I guess, our previous discussions on the at the meeting again on the on the 28th, uh, particularly about that the uh, the the second paragraph, the content of the second uh, paragraph. Um, uh, I think that we in we we. Certainly, support. I think support that idea. I think we still had questions. Of our, at least, I have a question in uh, in how to how the review committee might support this uh, in 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 practice. Um, I know we had some discussion about it about it previously, um, and um, and so then my my question is if if we're going to request that the, that the secretary then direct the DOI to to do that in 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 what manner would they, in what manner would they do that? Because we're, re we're requesting that that, that happen, um, that, that occur, but at the same time, we're not, we're, we're not, um, um, how would it come back to, to the review committee to the, if, if say someone from the, if, it, if a question comes to the review committee on how, how might, how might the, the DOI accomplish, accomplish that, um, if that's, if we're going to request that, how, how might they, um, you know, I think, I think that's fair, <laughs> you know, um, how might, they, how might they, uh, how might, how might the going forward, how might they accomplish uh, that, I guess is, is, is a question. Um, and I think there were some comments at the at the at, the, at our last meeting about uh, that uh, might some of those individuals and those those traditional leaders uh, been to you know to what to what degree I mean we don't we certainly don't know don't know know that but uh, to what degree that they've all, have already participated in some of these uh, conversations as they I think even one of our uh, 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 one of the, the trouble representatives from the, the last, from the, during uh, some of it, bits and pieces of it came up during the, uh, during uh, the, uh, the, the presentation, the disposition uh, presentation to, I think ab about that, about who, 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 who had been already participating in those, in those discussions and how that was, you know, acknowledged and recognized by those, by those tribal communities. So those are just kind of some questions I have ab about if we're going to make that request, you know, that I, that I have about that uh, before this is is submitted, or how we're going to yeah. submit that. Thanks, thanks, John. Honor, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, John, for those comments. Um, I also have a question about um, ensuring that our review committee does not exclude Native Hawaiian participants. I think that we often think about um the world in terms of our tribes because those are our experiences um 
But I'd also like to remind the review committee uh, that Native Hawaiians also uh, are within NAGPRA and within the law and that it's important to have their participation. And I don't want to exclude, um, uh, I'd rather remain, have this remain um, broader to be inclusive of them, um, you know, as we think about this, rather than excluding, um, excluding people. So maybe as we think about how this might happen, and I'm sure review committee members have suggestions, um, I, I would also like to ensure that we also incorporate um, Native Hawaiian people in these considerations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, my recollection of the, um, the discussion at the last meeting about this particular topic was we decided not to try to address the specific question that, that John uh, proposed as a, as a hypothetical if the secretary came back to us and said, well, review committee, I agree with you. Uh, uh, how do you recommend we do this? We would, we would have to come up with uh, some recommendations or procedures or suggestions for the the secretary and the other um, interior offices involved in the consultation as to how to proceed. But we didn't want to foreclose uh, mentioning it and, and uh, incorporating it somewhere into our, into our uh, comments at this, at this particular juncture. Uh, so I think it has the benefit of perhaps highlighting in the minds of some the importance of traditional and, and uh, ceremony and spiritual leaders within tribes um, uh, without us being very specific about, well, how do you, how do you actually do that? And uh, so I, I do think there's a benefit in it, in, uh, in, in including it. Um, if the, if the wording doesn't seem quite right. We could we could work with that with that again, uh, but I don't think we want to try to take the time to come up with a procedure at this point that we would that we would suggest. So here's how to do it. By the way, this is Barnaby. Uh, yes, you know the tribal representatives that are delegated responsibility to consult. A NAGPRA compliant on behalf of their tribal membership, we know that they involve traditional religious leaders, uh, practitioners, spiritual and ceremonial leaders uh, on um, what they want to do with that uh, proceeding with repatriation and, you know, various matters associated with uh, respect, dignity, mm -hmm. and, you know, return of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this really we should require the uh, Department of Interior to specify and, and do this. You know, we said before that it varies from tribe to tribe. Uh, some tribe may have already been doing that without specifically identifying their tribal members as that leadership role within that leadership role or uh, some tribes rise in that way. So it's really difficult. And we can only here again trust that the tribal representatives are already doing that and will continue to do that. And it's not necessary to make it a requirement. Like you said, they could turn around and say, well, you're requiring us to do this, then we mm -hmm. need some guidance or what is your mm -hmm. suggestion on how to proceed with that? So Barnaby, uh, uh, what I hear you saying is that this is already happening and uh, we don't need to and shouldn't try to impose some different kind of, of an approach or suggest that a different approach is needed. Is that what you would what you would say or what you're you're articulating? Yes, that's uh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Okay, thank you, Shelby. You have a comment. 
Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Frank. Um, just kind of following up on, on some of Barnaby's comments, um, I know in my own personal experience working with um, different um, tribal nations here in the Southwest, oftentimes I'll be working with um, a tribal historic preservation officer who will say, I need to go back and, and talk to our religious leaders or our elders about a particular issue or topic. And so um, I think in, in these individuals are, you know, the information that they keep um, is not for public consumption for the most part. Um, it's, it's not the kind of information that would be divulged in a, in a public kind of forum. So I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure how, you know, uh, all of a sudden involving religious leaders or ceremonial or spiritual leaders would be um, something that the department would want to force on tribes. Um, given what Honor was saying about confidentiality and many other things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, especially what Barnaby was saying that, um, you know, the, the tribal leaders are usually the, the they're kind of like the gatekeepers that would then go out to, to have a discussion with, um, with their religious leaders or whatever. So I, I kind of feel like this might be creating a problem for us that we okay. might might want to avoid. Okay, thank you. Honor your hands up and then John. Hi, Frank, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, again, I would urge our committee members not to exclude native Hawaiian experiences. Um, I think that this is uh, an important uh, group of people who are considered under the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. And I um, certainly understand um, the folks um, saying here, but I also want to make sure that we're as inclusive as possible um, of the people who formulated NAGPRA. Um, as well as um, folks who are having to repatriate today. Um, and I would hope also that, you know, going forward and considerations for our positions here on the review committee um, as well, that Native Hawaiian participants are not excluded. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. I would, I would note that based upon that, I mean, they're explicitly Native Hawaiian organizations are explicitly mentioned in the second line of the overall recommendation with at the beginning in the first paragraph. So we've, we've I think I don't think we've uh, we'd be neglecting them if we, for example, decided we didn't need the second paragraph. But that but that's just a you know it, it, it doesn't hurt to reemphasize it where you where you can. Uh, go ahead, John. Uh, yes, uh, I would. Uh... I want to thank uh, certainly uh, Shelby and, and Barney for their their comments. They were sort of hit on what I was attempting to hit on in my my initial comments about the about uh, wanting to certainly reach out or have you know have more I guess consultation opportunities with the the spiritual and ceremonial uh, leaders. Um, but uh, I do, uh, and it's been from from uh, from experience that I mean, and uh, which uh, Shelby has mentioned too, and certainly Barnaby. I mean that. Uh, um, we want to, we're certainly going on the, not just the idea or the assumption, but, uh, and that some of these tribal or these historic preservation programs that they're going, that they're, they're not unaware of the, of how, uh, those, the spirits and ceremonial leaders, how they exist within these, you know, within, within these communities. Um, and, uh, you know, I would venture to, you know, to say that, uh, I mean, they certainly, you know, their uh, the comments that are made via the, those those programs aren't aren't divorced from you know, working. You know, having discussions th those those internal discussions with those you know with the with those individuals. Uh, so that was some of the I guess that and Barnaby said it well, and so did Shelby. But I mean, that was just some of the I guess the question or some of the concerns I wanted to to raise. 
And I wasn't so much, I guess, going to say that at this time we had to provide a provide a, a process for that, you know, in this in this letter. But you know, but to say that if, if that's if the if it's going to feel like it, if the if it's going to feel like it's going to be a requirement, like how would they do that? If you know, how would they you know to to I guess to pinpoint if they're accomplishing that, if the tribes themselves are already accomplishing that in 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 the discussions that through those appoint I say those appointed offices, those tribal government offices, however they might exist, or the the combination or those responsibilities, how they sit within those in those programs or or offices, which you know we can can in some ways you know assume I, I was saying that that uh, um, that they're they're incorporating the, the views of those or how how it is they 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 see the best way to um, um, address those to formally address those concerns in their other comments to the to the park service or 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 nagpra i guess is what i was you know was i guess it's more along the lines of also what barnaby and, and, and shelby was was saying but if we're going to again if we're going to say that again we don't have to have a process in place but one might expect if we're going to request that that uh, um we might have to you know you might have to uh, there a question might then be posed to the review committee on how to how they might accomplish how, how they might accomplish that and right now i don't have an easy i don't have an easy answer for that because it's been pointed out it's try it's tribal nation to tribal nation and one may have different views on on that so i'm certainly hesitant to to do a blanket sort of uh uh you know to make a blanket comment uh to that wanting to acknowledge those uh the the separate wanting to acknowledge the separate tribal nations um uh, but to the other i mean i uh but to the other certainly i think that we're I think that's that's addressed about the Native Hawaiian organizations. That's addressed, I think, in the in the first, you know, the first paragraph uh, of this uh, of this section. If we want to add further comment to sort of emphasize the, you know, the the further need for that, then then I think that that's that that's certainly okay. Um, if I might jump in here for a minute, this issue is directly related to an issue in the regulatory text itself. And I think that um, you could easily translate this conversation that you've just had uh, to a comment about the regulatory text. Under both summaries and inventories, um, there is a requirement that consultation um, must occur with Indian tribes and traditional religious leaders. I'm not aware that any museum has insisted uh, that traditional religious leaders be consulted before they can move forward in a NAGPRA process. But certainly you could read the regulatory text as it's written right now that way. And if you consider this conversation that you're having about the sovereignty of Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations in identifying when spiritual or ceremonial leaders participate um, and how they participate, uh, it would seem to me that a suggestion of removing that uh, requirement for traditional religious leaders to participate as a must in consultation um, would be a, a, a recommendation this committee can make to the secretary on those the regulations. So I just thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. conversation that, really that. dovetails into the specific regulatory text itself. Okay. Good. I agree with removing uh, any kind of removal of the participation of Native American spiritual leaders from this context or from um, our uh, NAGPRA law. I am dead set against that. The people who originally came together in creating NAGPRA um, uh, need to be included in this. And I, I do not, I absolutely do not recommend that such, um, a recommendation be made to Congress or to to the Secretary of the Interior. Um, Honor, you you're talking about the the um, in in any comments we might develop on the specific sections that uh, Melanie was referring to, correct? And in, in other words, we we. I think I think what Melanie was pointing out is that the committee will have an opportunity to come back at this particular issue when we get to to that particular part of the uh, the draft proposed regulations. 
And I, I apologize if, if I misspoke uh, what I was hearing from the committee in regard to this inclusion of, of this language in your, your letter. Uh, alternately, if the committee felt very strongly that traditional religious leaders should always be consulted and, and museums must be required to consult with traditional religious leaders, then that would be another recommendation the committee could make to the secretary um, to ensure that it is a requirement for a museum or federal agency to not only consult with Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations, but to ensure that they have record of consultation with traditional religious leaders. That could be the alternative way that this committee might make a, a recommendation to the, to the secretary on what the regulations should require. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, are there any other comments on this section? Tim, I, I, your, your image is not in view of me on this uh, screen. So I don't, can't tell whether you got your hand raised or not, but. Sure, you, um, I didn't, but um, I actually agree with Honor. I think <clears throat> we as a committee should always ask and museums and federal agencies should always ask. And I think we should require them to ask in our recommendations, whether a tribe or the individual religious leader chooses to engage with that consultation request is obviously up to them. But I think we should require that the museum and federal agencies and ourselves always ask. Okay. Um... As I understand our discussion on this particular topic, which is the second recommendation, there's no objection to the first part of that, the first paragraph, the longer paragraph, but there are some concerns about the second. And uh, the, uh, the concerns are, I think, that by highlighting this here, we might uh, sidetrack consultation and relationships within tribes and within Native Hawaiian organizations, uh, and that we should uh, rather rely upon the, the uh, contexts, the contacts that the department is making with the tribes to ensure uh, that the tribes will, uh, that the, to uh, rely upon the tribes to ensure that the traditional, um, uh, religious and spiritual leaders are involved in, in consultations. So it seems to me that uh, just dropping the second paragraph would not, would, would, we would still be able to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish here, which is support the tribal requests that we know already exist for more time for, for consultation. Um, so that's, I think that's what I'm going to propose is, but we need to have a consensus at least to move that, move that forward and talk about the third, the third recommendation. Does anybody object uh, strenuously to that or as an alternative somewhere in the first paragraph to insert the uh, our understanding that consultation will will also involve traditional uh, tribal traditional leaders and tribal traditional and spiritual and religious leaders because that would be i guess another way of doing of doing that john go ahead yes and to your to your your, your comment right there. <laughs> I think that that would be, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't think anyone is, is saying that that shouldn't be a part of the, that shouldn't be a part of the process or, you know, you know, directly, I don't think anyone is, is I'm personally not saying thing that. No, and I, and I think Barnaby and both Barnaby and Shelby are saying, well, it, it is in their yeah. experiences. It, 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 this is already occurring. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to mention it at this point. I think, and it's and it's important. I mean, it, I don't think anyone is, is saying that that's not that's that's not in, that's not important. Uh, but, but to your comment, somehow that it we want to how we support how we support 
you know, those, those conversations. We want to support those conversations, certainly within the, within the communities, but also that the, how that's being, uh, how those, I don't know, in some ways enter into the, what we're, how the, to this request, I guess. So, so John, you're saying if, if, if someone were to uh, tactfully insert some reference to uh, traditional religious leaders uh, in the first paragraph that that not as a directive, but as a consultation would, you know, we would anticipate consultation includes, or we know that consultation includes or something like that. Yes. Along those lines, or as a reminder, or, you know, or something, you know, to something, to something to that, to something to that degree. I mean, and uh, can I get a, um, a lack of opposition to that or even a endorsement of that approach? And we would, we would drop the, Second paragraph, but we would add uh, some. We do some wordsmithing on the uh, on the first paragraph to ensure uh, there's a mention of the need to include um, the tribal and religious leaders. Shelby, your hands up. Go ahead. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, and I think um, based on Melanie's recommendation. As we look at, at the regulations more closely, especially under the summaries and inventory section, we can um, really make sure that, that there's something in there. Um, as Tim was saying, an honor and, and everyone else, I think we, could, we can strengthen the, the comments about you know, including uh, tribal religious leaders uh, and Native Hawaiian spiritual leaders and so on. Okay, thank you. Barnaby, I can't see your, your uh, image on my screen, but does that satisfy your concerns? Yes, it, uh, I agree with uh, John and Shelby. That's probably the best thing to do as long as it's uh, not a requirement because I know what uh, Tim's statement about require museums to do this. It's not gonna work at all. It, Museums don't know who they, these people mm -hmm. are, and and they can't make a move without, you know, the tribal representatives identifying them, bringing them to yeah. a place to discuss matters. These uh, traditional religious leaders, a lot of them aren't even aware of, of the formal process that's related to NAGPRA. They can only give so much, you know, traditional religious. Uh, advice, cultural appropriateness, and and other matters related to, you know, that traditions of that those people. But it's not that they're going to be able to provide what I call educated, uh, elaborate statements related to responses for this kind of a modern day solicitation of perspectives from tribes related to these regulations. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to think about the real world. It's easy to say to get them that they must do this, but in reality, it's not that it's not that simple. There's always a challenge, especially in this modern day. That's all I have. Thanks, Barnaby. Thank you. Uh, Honor. Uh, if we move forward with uh, with what I propose, is that okay with you? I think we should move forward. Okay, thank you very much. So we will move forward to the third, uh, third recommendation, which is um, at the bottom of uh, the second page. This one is uh, the comment that the uh, sec secretary um, uh, should be cognizant of uh, finance increases, uh, modifications to the procedures that are going to increase the amount of time or the or the cost for um, complying uh, properly complying with uh, with the law. Uh, I'm sure the secretary does have those things in mind, um, but um, it it's uh, it's something that uh, I think we would I think we should highlight because for uh, almost as much time as we have had the law. There have been concerns about the uh, uh, how we actually uh, get the resources, get the financial resources, and the staff resources uh, at all at both ends at at the at, you know in the many kinds of organizations that are 
have have a role in implementing NIAGPRA to actually carry out, carry it out properly, to do proper consultation, to to do the proper um, information gathering that's needed to you know whether objects and remains meet the criteria, uh, all all of those all of those kinds of things. So I think it's important at this point as we look at the specific aspects of the uh, the changes that are being uh, proposed that that we keep that we keep that in mind also uh, other comments from uh, uh, other review committee members please at this point on this particular one um, it's okay to say yes it looks fine the way it is if uh, if you think so that's okay but if you don't what what would make it better? I see some smiles. I see some happy faces. I have no objections. This is Barnaby. Thank you, Barnaby. Excellent. It's a good beginning to our discussion <laughs> of this point. <laughs> hearing hearing no other objections and seeing uh, Honor, I can't I can't actually see your your uh, image, but um, I don't see your hand raised. So, if this looks okay, then let's uh, let's uh, let's take it, and uh, we'll move on to uh, Frank. You should probably ah. change. Go ahead, Honor. Yes, go ahead. You should probably change recommends to requests. Okay, that's that's right. We were we. I think that goes all the way back to the one of the very first comments we had on last week. Uh, at our 28th meeting. So I will do that, make that change. Okay, then great. Uh, thank you, committee members. So number four, um, when we talked, we talked about this, these, these uh, um, issues last, uh, at the last meeting, uh, I think several members commented that these may not directly relate to the, um, this particular set of recommendation, uh, this particular set of procedural uh, uh, revisions that are being proposed, but that these would be important. These, these would be important for effective implementation of, of uh, NAGPRA, whether the uh, uh, revised procedures uh, were became became the actual the new procedures after the regulatory review process or whether they didn't, whether even with the existing procedures that we that we work with and other organizations work with, these kinds of things would be would be important. So we agreed to include include this uh, and honor uh, put put things together. I did just a, a tad of wordsmithing on it uh, as well. And uh, so now um, do we include this? This would be the this would be the fourth uh, recommendation or request um, that we would include in uh, in our letter to the secretary. Comments, please. Again, I will say if it looks fine, we can we can use it as is if it needs to be changed, or if you have questions about it or concerns, you know, is this going to create a problem? We should we should talk about it now before we. Go forward. This is Barnaby. Yeah, I think it's something more appropriate in our annual report than the letter here, since it's something, or what I call a new, a new idea, more or less. So it's just my comment. Well, you know that occurred to me too, Barnaby, because you know we we uh, it does ask for. It does, in the end, it says, you know, more resources would be needed, and we said that. The, the problem with putting it in our annual report uh, is that the annual report is to Congress. Um, and we could say to Congress, well, I don't think we could, actually. I don't think the department or the secretary would want us to say to Congress, you need to give the Secretary of the Interior more money so that um, these things can be, can be done to implement NAGPRA. We've said... We have said in more general terms that uh, the grants program, the money for the grants program should be increased, that federal agencies and uh, should uh, need, need more money to carry out 
uh, NAGPRA more effectively or more, or more quickly. Uh, so we do that in the annual report. Um, but these, these recommendations would go directly to the Secretary of the Interior, and that's a different, um, she, she is uh, a, uh, a, different, a different audience. She would, you know, she could then ask Congress herself or she could find the money in uh, somewhere else in the department and uh, make, it, make these things uh, doable that way. So that's the only, I think that's one reason it might be difficult to, uh, to get to this level of specificity with, the, with our report to Congress. But that, but it, I did, that did occur to me that that would be one would be a possibility as well. Other other comments, concerns. Honor, I can't see again. I, I don't see that you've got your hand up. Do you, do you want to comment on this? Hi, Frank. Thanks. I, I think because I think the original texts were ones that you were uh, advocating for. Um, you know, I think in our last uh, review committee meeting, we had discussed this a little bit, and a point had been made about the importance of reiterating this, um, not only to Congress, but to the Secretary of the Interior. I mean, one of the major barriers, and I mentioned this earlier that I've been seeing um, here, is that we are not hearing uh, in our public comment times about <laughs> what uh, tribes uh, and others would like to see. No one is commenting. And so I think it's important to identify why that is happening. And I think this is certainly part of um, uh, the process and the mechanism of consultation uh, to ensure that the information is getting back to tribes. Um, and so the creation of this listserv and database uh, to ensure that that information is getting out to the proper people and there is a notification um, system in place that reaches all of the tribes and not just kind of sitting waiting for people to find um, a website uh, to check in on periodically, I think it's important. Um, and the information uh, that seems to be absent since 2017, I think is also uh, problematic for us in trying to ensure that the, um, that the process with the, the current regulations and the draft regulations will work because we don't have those that information to compare it to. Um, so I, I agree with the former comments that it's better that we ensure that this gets in front of the Secretary of the Interior and Congress. Thanks. Thank you, Honor. John, go ahead. Uh, yes, to the, the database or the listserv uh, question. Um, I know I, again, we've talked about this a few different, on a few different occasions at, at other meetings, um, but uh, um, then, so I'm reading two parts of the, 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 re or the request, the recommendation. Um, and is that, are we really, are we really asking for an improvement upon the, the contact procedure or the, or the procedure right now, the list that the, that the, uh, that uh, I guess National NAGPRA has put together their, their process. Um, and is it, uh, are we really, are we really asking that this, this list should be kept updated, you know, six, you know, six months or updated on a more regular basis? I, I guess that's my uh, question uh, right now, because I'm assuming, um, and uh, I know she's probably spoke on it numerous times before, <laughs> uh, but, uh, and I, uh, uh, the DFO uh, is available. I mean, I, I think she said before, what's, uh, you know, 
what what the con you know what the what the what the process is now or what is the what is the you know the the list that they have their contact list that they have for the the tribes or what goes out to the what goes out to the tribes uh and then are, are we asking for that to be you know kept updated on a more on a more regular basis whether it be the formal letter or uh some type of electronic you know correspondence that can that can that can go out i mean that's I guess that's a. I guess that's that's a, that's a question or a comment that I that I have. Because I'm, I'm, we know they have something. I guess is the. So so, John, let me just see. Are you are you saying these? We recognize that as as honor as pointed out that these are things that they're improving. The communications would be would be good. I you know I think most of us think that probably is is. Is necessary. How to do it is, I think, a, you know, can be can be a question. It can be it's another uh, another uh, set of, of activities that would would need to occur to figure out how best to do it. Um, and so, uh, um, so John, am I hearing you say, uh, like like I think Barnaby said that there are other ways that might be more effective. Of uh, requesting this of the of the secretary or or of some other of some other government entity or are you saying we should do it but maybe it's a bit a little too specific I'm, I'm not quite sure yeah I mean I get my 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 comment so what is you know uh, is it is the is there what is there an absence of right now is there is there is there an absence of um, like I guess a comprehensive uh, listserv or one that is specific to the whatever it is the contact mechanism that is specific to um, how tribal nations are are you know contacted it, what's the you know what is the um what's the is there a flaw in that what's the flaw in that what's the flaw in that mechanism that will will a will listserv uh, mm -hmm. uh correct to what degree will a listserv correct uh that and if there is already something that's similar to that in place, is it more so than uh, that that is revisited, you know, or you know, we recommend or we're requesting that 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 is that whoever's responsibility that is is to stay on, you know, be on top of that, you know, every three months or six months to make sure the contacts are still, you know, are still in place, and uh, you know what the what the recommended procedure is. Is that what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you. Other comments, Shelby or Tim or both of you? No, not, not Shelby and Tim, no. Um, well, I hear, I think what I hear is two, two, two members who have, uh, commented that that um, this might not be the right spot for for this this kind of a, of a request um, uh, honor I think continues to point out that we should take whatever option other other any sort of uh, option um, comes our way to uh, emphasize this this kind of need anybody want to want to give way and say yes or no on this besides Tim, go ahead. I'm fine with retaining it. Okay. All right. Honor, do you have any any further thoughts on it, or you is this uh, fully baked into your your concept of what this letter should look like? Uh, no further comments. I'd like to see it retained. Okay. John, go ahead. Uh, John, you're mute. Or... Oh yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, a an issue with it being retained. That that was just sort of some I don't know, just sort of thinking out loud on some of the that what it is you know that we're that we're at, you know that's being that's being asked or ultimately is going to be asked of of national of national NAGPRA. I mean. Okay. 
Okay, then I then I think we we probably um, just uh, looking at the numbers that we'll we should go ahead and, and retain it, and we'll see whether uh, we'll see what comes of it. it, it no. Um, in the recommendations, but if if there are no uh, objections beyond what we've already heard, uh, and, and Barnaby, I, I I do I do understand your your position on this, and I I share some of your perspective on it as well. I'm trying to get get us uh, to the point where we have some text that we can agree to go forward with. That's in this in this instance, and we'll see what happens. The, the secretary may may or may not do anything about it, but. Uh, at least it'll be there, and, and uh, at least some of the members feel that that's important. So well, let's let's go ahead. So we will keep number four. So with that, uh, with the uh, changes we discussed for number one, the the last uh, or the the uh, the paragraph about uh, information from the, the tribal consultation with changes that we talked about there. We'll make those, and we will uh, add um, in the paragraph of uh, recommendation number two in the first paragraph some reference to traditional uh, the involvement of traditional religious leaders and traditional leaders uh, uh, from tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations. Uh, and in the uh, in the third recommendation. We will say requests rather than recommends. And I've made a note here based upon our discussion there that in addition to talking about tribes, we'll mention Native Hawaiian organizations. Um, with those modifications, does the committee then agree that we will use that as the as the text for a letter from the review committee? Uh, and I and I as the chair, I will be happy to sign that and we could get everybody's name on it. Um, uh, does everybody agree to go forward? Okay. Uh, John had a comment first, Tim, and then you. John, go ahead. Uh, what's that? Is it, who's up? Is it, is it me? Or is it, is it Tim? It's to you, to you first. Okay. You uh, hand up before I saw this. this. Um, I don't want to backpedal too much. I, I had one, just one quick comment that I saw that I had overlooked with the, with the point on number three. Uh, particularly about the the additional the additional funding needs, um, um, and will that be? I mean, of course, we're saying to uh, to be able to address any new requirements in there for consultation. But are these specifically are these, or if not not specific, but are these funding needs really that they're going to be asked for? Um, to will it be to really is is the idea to to complete the repatriation process? For, is that what we're? Is that what we're? I don't know if that's just a slight addition in there into one of those sentences, but if we're going to ask for additional funding, um, is it? And since this is the the, the NAGPRA law or the Act, if, if we're asking more funding, what is the funding going to cover? I mean, really, is the priority for the additional funding uh, to for processes to complete the to complete well, repatriation processes? I, th I we I don't think we've we've. Well, oh, if you look at the third line of number three, um, new requirements for consultation, claims or responses by tribes or Native Hawaiian organizations, shortened timelines or new reporting uh, will affect um, tribes, particularly smaller tribes and we had Native Hawaiian organizations, uh, as well as museums and federal agencies. So it's um, we we're, we're referring there to some of the major kinds of activities that are involved in whatever the specific procedures are uh, to affect repatriation or disposition. Consultation, uh, response, uh, claims or responses by tribes. That, you know, we, we, we uh, heard, we've, we've heard in the last year, a number of uh, requests for disposition and you know, I think all of us are aware of the amount of time those take for uh, a tribe or a tribe and the, and its consultants to put to put together. So that would be a a a, a kind of funding that could very well uh, increase the speed with which repatriations occur. Uh, shortened timelines. That's one thing that the uh, 
uh, the proposed regulation seem to call for. We haven't discussed that as a specific aspect, but that's my reading at least, and new reporting requirements. All of those things would be, I think, part of any, any new procedures based upon the revisions that we're, that we're looking at in that July 2021. So funding would be new funding to in, increase the ability of the tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations, the museums and the federal agencies to accomplish these things is going, is going to be required. And, uh, or it, we're just gonna have a set of, of regulations that maybe people will find even more frustrating than the current regulations, which we hear um, people being frustrated by in, in some instances, at least. So in, at least in my view, that's what we're asking the secretary to uh, consider in, uh, in, this, uh, in this process and, and to, to try to you know, provide some, some way to uh, provide that, that increased funding. Is that, does that, I don't know if that alleviates your, your concern, John, or? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in support of increased funding, <laughs> increased funding, uh, just to, that, you know, I think we've talked about this at earlier meetings and even in discussions on our, uh, during some of our discussions with the, uh, the annual report, you know, if we're going <laughs> to, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to make the recommendation for, you know, for additional funding, you know, the, you know, the. Yes, yes. That's the, right. that, so that, that's what I was, I was speaking to yeah. our. We've had in-depth discussions of that, many yep. of those discussions. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. the, yes. so that's what I was sort of refer, was, was referring yeah. to, that there has to be what, you know, what's the, if there's a question, like what is the end result or what are the end result is going to be if you're going to ask for additional funding. And certainly we want it to go in to support all of those positive outcomes. Uh, but what, what are those, out, you know, that, like, that's what I was sort of yeah. going back to our, our, are many in-depth discussions on this this very this very question yeah. or topic, which is which is why when we were drafting this, that those those particular things came up in my at least in my mind in terms of what we wanted to highlight the need the need for. So, um, were there any other any other comments? Um, do I can I oh, Tim? I'm sorry, Tim. You had actually early on in this discussion, you suggested there was another another point. Do you want to go ahead and, and describe what you had in mind? I'm um, sure. Um, <clears throat> I think in going through this draft, I think we're pointing out to the secretary in this letter that there are a number of things we basically need to do our job. We need information. We need to make sure it's good quality information. Um, we need more time to do the review. The one thing we haven't touched on um, is we also need members of the committee. Um, Melanie, when she started today, indicated that there is one position that is currently vacant. That's Armin's position. And I look back at a little bit of uh, sort of the timing of some of these that when Heather Edgar and Patrick Lyons' position expired on November the 9th of 2019, a notice had been published five months prior to that date to solicit nominations and there was a 90 day period of uh, national scientific and museum organizations to make nominations for those positions. But those positions were still vacant for seven months. With Armin's position, his position expired on August the 30th of 2021. The notice for that position was published three months ahead instead of five, and with only a 60 day period for nominations. And we're on six months and counting that the position's been vacant. We're facing a situation in two months where John, Barnaby, and Honor's position will all expire. And there's still no notice published for those. So, I think we're in a situation where there is some reasonable likelihood that if Armin's position is not filled by May the 10th, we'll only have three members of the committee and none of them will have been nominated by Indian tribes. This is an issue that is squarely in the, under the control of the secretary because 
appointing members to the committee is not one of the duties under the statute that the secretary has delegated. This is her issue. And I think we should raise this with her because if we do not have members, we're gonna be unable to do our job. And with that, I would propose this section that I've posted in the chat and I'll read it into the record. The review committee requests that the secretary expeditiously appoint a member to fill the position that has been vacant for over five months and ensure that the National Park Service expeditiously publish the solicitation for nominations for the two positions that will expire on 10 May, 2022. The committee is currently developing a list of nominees for the other position that also expires on 10 May, 2022. Failure of the secretary to appoint members timely could delay our ability to do our work, including our statutory responsibility to consult on the development of implementing regulations. Okay, okay. And would we add that to number four, Tim? Um, I actually think it's four, I think is, I actually think it should be up a little higher. I think it's a different kind of activity than number four. So it might be somewhere That's higher, true. but I, if the text is satisfactory, I'll leave that to your discretion. Okay. What is the, what do the uh, other committee members think about this? Oh, uh, Shelby, you have your hand up, go ahead. Um, I totally agree, Tim. I think this is an excellent idea. And um, I, I agree as well to move it up further. Um, I mean, I, I, there's a real good possibility we don't have new members coming on um, in the next six to eight months. Tim and I are going to be the, be the committee. So, um, you know, because I think Frank, you, your term will expire, I think in October. That's or, correct, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I mean, uh, I think this, we're gonna get, a, get to a critical point here, I think pretty soon if, if, um, if this doesn't happen. So I, I agree with Tim. I think this is really important that the secretary be aware of it and I would move it up. Um, I don't know, maybe even, uh, I don't know, we can, we can figure out where we could move it up to. But, okay. but I think it's it's a really important point that needs to be uh, brought to the secretary's attention. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, other other committee members. I I agree. I think it is something that's well. It's it's obviously vital. You can't have a review committee without review committee members, and and we're we're facing that not quite in in that sort of catastrophic, but but in a way that would prevent us, prevent the committee from, from actually operating, even, even if it has two or three members. Uh, Melanie, you have, you just put a chat up. I didn't see what it was. Do you, do you have a comment on this, Madam DFO? No, I, I just wanted to make clear to the public that the information on membership and, and terms is publicly available on our website. But, my recollection is that at the very end of last the last meeting in February, February 28th, there was a, an exchange back and forth about uh, publishing requests for nominees. Was that was that correct? And you yes, I had, committed to working on that uh, February 28th. Which can I, you give us an update? Uh, I submitted the nomination notice to the department. For the the three members who's for the two the for, two members for John and John and Barnaby's position okay and the third that's correct the third we'll have to give up the list okay when did you get a sense from the department as to when they would have it published uh, no I I requested that it be as uh, soon as possible okay thank you thank you for doing that 
Um, it seems to me then that this is something we do want to include. And uh, as, uh, well, um, okay, where do we go? Where do we go next on this? So we, we basically have, we have the draft, the text together. Um, if, uh, if review committee members would, would once again agree to have me do the wordsmithing, um, I can do that and uh, uh, and then we and we can, can do the letter. And if, if Tim is all right with, with me and with, with Shelby's comment about this as well, and with that in mind, uh, select maybe the right place to put it given the, uh, given the other materials that we have, um, then, um, then we'll, we'll, we'll do that if that's okay. With uh, with the committee, if the committee endorses endorses moving forward a letter to the secretary, basically with this text that we've talked about for the last uh, hour and a half or so, and uh, with the additional text that Tim has proposed, um, um, I will do that. Uh, Madam DFO, I would like to ask you in terms of the, the protocol for this, a, a letter from the review committee to the secretary. Do we have precedent as to what kind of format? That takes is there? Uh, is, does uh, do I just uh, type it up on my uh, computer and uh, send it to the secretary's office, or do you have a, a, a different route that we can uh, utilize? Certainly, it should go through me, uh, so it should you should send it to me to send to the secretary. Okay. Okay. All right, I will do that, and. Um, Okay. Well, I thank I thank everybody very much for the for the discussion and for moving that forward. Um, we are we have about forty minutes, a little bit less than forty minutes left, as I as I read the clock here in Arizona. Madam DFO, is that correct from your your timekeeping? Also, um, where are we on the agenda? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, uh, so. There was a request at the last meeting that we provide additional opportunity for public comment. So uh, this uh, be a good time to provide that opportunity for public comment. Okay. A second opportunity for public comment. All right. Let's uh, let's let's do that right now. Then. If if you would like to make public comment, you can raise your hand using the Zoom feature, uh, or you can. Put something into the chat. If you have any difficulty using either of, of those options, you can always send an email to nagpra underscore info at nps.gov. At this time, I, I don't see any comments or raised hands, and I have no email messages. Madam Chair, then should we proceed with the other items on the agenda? Certainly. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, new business, old business item, the kind of catch all. Um, and my notes, I have here that there were two issues to discuss. Um, one was 
uh, the committee's effort to develop a list of persons uh, to provide to the secretary for an appointment to the seventh member's position. And the other issue was uh, the report to Congress for 2022. All right. And, um... We received a, uh, a uh, informative description of processes that, that have been used in the past to uh, develop the, the list of names for the seventh position from Brady. Uh, what do we need to do to, uh, to move that, that forward? You just have to have an agreement by the committee as to what we're going to try to, uh, how we're going to try to do that when we're going to schedule it, correct? Um, well, let me just correct. It was Lisa who shared with you what was done in 2017 um, in developing a list of persons. Uh, the review committee um, needs to develop a list. Um, you have options for how you develop that list, but in the past, um, Discussions have been uh, brought forward, names have been proposed, um, individual members have provided some basic information about the person that they are proposing. Um, and then in the end, uh, I need a list of, of at least two people uh, that the six members, I'm sorry, the, um, the five other members of the committee uh, agree to. Um, and you will submit that list to me, and then I will move that forward to the secretary for an appointment. Any discussion of that process by the um, committee members? I would ask that um, before you propose a name, of an individual that you do contact that individual and make sure they want to be proposed uh, as a member of the committee. It has occurred in the past where um, names were put forward on a list and the, the person who was named on the list was not actually um, willing or, or able to serve on the committee. So um, before you put forward a name, please confirm with the person uh, that you are putting forward their name. Any members, any, any comments on that? So we need to just simply, we need to decide when we're going to try to set aside some time at one of the meetings to have, have that discussion. Is that your sense, Madam DFO? Well, I, I would suggest you have some time now. I don't know if anybody has brought names um, with them today. Um, but I will need the list of names by the March 21st meeting for sure. Uh, otherwise, um, it, it may take even longer for that appointment. So I would highly encourage the committee to have a complete list that they all agree on uh, by March 21st. Committee members, what do you think about that? Okay. Um, Frank, uh, yes, Tim, go ahead. Um, if we're gonna, are we gonna try to do this now or start this now, or do we wanna schedule it for the next meeting? Well, I have to say just for my own, my, uh, myself, I am not prepared to offer any names because I haven't, uh, well, I've begun thinking about it. I haven't contacted anyone about it. So I would like to not have to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily object to starting it, the process if people do have individuals in mind, um, but I would like the opportunity to come back to the, the topic at uh, the March 21st meeting. So do we wanna go ahead and, and get started? Just to clarify, there's also a meeting. So Pardon me? Have this, 
the, the discussion could happen on March 15th as well as March 21st. You're saying March 21st because that's the, the last scheduled meeting. Uh, yeah. We haven't, we have we do have some subsequent meetings that we're thinking about or that have been, I don't know what at what point they are, but we talked about them a little. We talked about that possibility a little bit. But but you have you have uh, today, uh, next week, and then a following meeting to discuss this list. And in the past, it, there has been been some disagreement on on the list. So I would encourage you to not wait until the the last possible meeting to discuss it, just in case there is any disagreement. Okay. Um, Shelby, go ahead. Thank you. Um, well, I did reach out to two people um, this past, since our last meeting, which was just what a week ago, um, and one person was not able to um, commit um, to being on the review committee at this point in time, but the other one has. Uh, this person's very busy, but um, he has great passion about NAGPRA and that is uh, Chip Caldwell. And uh, Chip, um, as you may all know, um, published this incredible book called um, Plundered Skulls and Stolen Spirits um, while he was working as the, um, as the curator of anthropology at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science where he was for, for 12 years. Um, he's been involved with um, over a hundred consultation, tribal consultations and, and a number of repatriations. He's, um, he is no longer at the um, Museum of Nature and Science. He is currently, um, he is the founding editor in chief of Sapiens, which is a mm -hmm. digital uh, journal, anthropological journal. Um, he has his PhD in anthropology from Indiana University and has held fellowships and grants uh, from the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the National Endowment for the Humanities, National Science Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, and he's also had a Fulbright um, fellowship. He's, um, he's published a lot, and especially on NAGPRA and archaeology and anthropology. Um, he's, um, I, I, I've, I think he would be, um, a wonderful, um, part of this committee. He has a lot of, uh, expertise and personal experience with repatriation and NAGPRA. Um, so anyway, I would like to, uh, to offer his name, um, as a potential, um, uh, person we might want to put on our list. Okay. Any any comments regarding Chip uh, at this point? Has anybody thought about other names or other and, and made contacts? Tim. Um, I also have two names to propose. Uh, initially, I had two names to propose. Um, one of them was Honor Keeler, who's currently in the seventh position. Um, and I had a conversation with her last night um, and she has declined the nomination. And I just wanted to see if we could offer her a moment to talk about that. Honor, would you like, would you like to do that? Yes, um, thank you, Tim, for the nomination. Um, and I've appreciated the review committee members and staff that I've worked with over the years. Uh, repatriation is not easy work. It is devastating. It is traumatic. It is emotional, but it's necessary for us all. Um, NAGPRA came into existence because of the dedication and determination of indigenous peoples in the United States who would not take a back seat for this injustice that occurred to our peoples. And it continues to occur to us, to our ancestors and to our ways of life. Um, I see it as a matter of equality 
and justice and a human rights issue. This monumental legislation that was passed in 1990 created a mechanism for repatriation from federally funded institutions. It was up to Congress to properly fund the National NAGPRA program and the National Park Service to properly execute this mechanism. While one of the accomplishments I've seen in this four year term has been the hiring of the first full-time investigator in the history of the National NAGPRA program as well as the disposition um, and repatriation of many ancestors, there have been a number of problems um, that have not yet been addressed. And I wanted to share with the review committee some of these um, in short form. Um, first of all, my nomination went in for this position um, a year before I heard anything happen. And it was 10 days after my appointment and from colleagues that I heard that I was nominated. Um, similarly, vacancies throughout the past four years um, haven't been timely film, filled. And I encourage uh, the review committee and the Department of the Interior to expedite these um, in a more timely and respectful way. Um, I'm highly concerned about this. Um, and in particular, uh, we're in the middle of uh, an important review of the NAGPRA regulations. And I think it's necessary that the review committee member positions be filled. Part of my work in this committee has been to listen to tribes, NHOs, Native American religious leaders and scientific organizations, federal agencies and the public to hear barriers encountered um, in this process. There are many and over the past four years, there's been little improvement on some of them. These barriers are encountered um, that we've encountered um, goes back farther than the COVID-19 pandemic or government, um, or government shutdowns that we encountered during that time. Federal agencies cannot track their NAGPRA expenditures without line items for them in their budgets. Without these, no monitoring occurs and no data can be accumulated for the government to budget and provide additional funding. This must be done within the agencies. It will help the process and it will help another barrier which should find an easy solution yet has dragged on indefinitely among museums and the agencies which, and which are federal repositories. There is a responsibility of the federal government, the entire federal government and museums to provide inventories and summaries to tribes. I'm really sick and tired of hearing the multitude of excuses because neither want to take up this responsibility. Claims of it being too much work or not having enough money among universities that have multi-billion dollar endowments reeks of colonialism and injustice, particularly when this injustice has been perpetrated against Native Americans and tribes operate their repatriation offices with so little resources. The federal government has a multi-trillion dollar budget. Where are the resources for the return of our ancestors and our cultural items? The message any reasonable person or tribal community would receive from this is that indigenous peoples are not a priority. In my term, the operations of the review committee were shut down for over a year. Nothing happened despite the wishes of the review committee to function and requests made. My hope is this will never happen again. The native ancestors and cultural items will never again have to wait to go home. I have deep concerns about the reporting of information to tribes and the public about complaints about failure to comply, ongoing investigations and any resulting prosecutions. Why has this not been reported since 2017? Are laws that pertain to indigenous peoples being placed at the bottom rung within a hierarchy of enforcement of federal laws? 
The review committee should create at least two reports on a consistently annual basis. One should be to Congress and the other should be to the Secretary of the Interior. During my tenure, one of our reports to Congress was approved and it took over a year to convey to Congress. These reports must be completed every year. I was shocked to learn that no system exists to notify all tribes and NHOs of review committees, meetings, events, and the functions of the National NAGPRA program. The burden should be on the federal government due to the government to government relationship that it has with tribes to maintain such a system and to ensure there is adequate notification and opportunities for their participation. How are we 30 plus years into NAGPRA, at NAGPRA without this in place? It is my hope also that the Department of the Interior and National NAGPRA program make better efforts to hire Native Americans to administer this program. I believe only two have worked in this program over a 30 year history. Um, again, Tim and members of the committee, I appreciate the nomination, but I decline until I see movement on these issues. What else? Thank you. Thank you, Honor. I appreciate your deeply felt sentiments there. Tim. Um, I had a second nominee. Um, I would like to nominate Edward Hale Aloha Ayao. Uh, for the position. Um, Hale Aloha is a native Hawaiian religious leader. He's been active in repatriation since before NAGPRA was passed. He worked for Senator Inouye's staff when the bills uh, that eventually became NAGPRA were in discussion in both the House and the Senate. Um, he's an attorney. He worked with the Native American Rights Fund with uh, Walter Echohawk. He's been very active uh, initially as a kind of a mentee of Edward Kanahele uh, at Hui Malama Ina Kupuna a Hawaii Ne, uh, and ultimately he was the executive director of that organization. He's currently working on repatriation issues with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. He's just returned from a highly successful visit to Germany and here in uh, Austria as well and returned um, a number of iwi kapuna from six different museums. Uh, and I strongly recommend that we consider his nomination. And, and he, I've talked to him, he is agreeable. And Edward, I think this is the same individual was involved with at least one of the disputes in the early days of the uh, committee's work. Is that, is that right, Tim? Am I remembering the right, the right person, Eddie? Eddie yeah. Ayao. Eddie That's, Ayao. At that point. Um, he uh, he was involved in the Providence dispute twice. Um, I think there's another one. Oh, the the Berkeley dispute. Mm, at the very beginning. Which which was the first dispute. Right. He was involved right. in that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Other suggestions or potential potential suggestions for a seventh member list? Okay. Um, if not, um, I think we uh, take Madam DFO's uh, recommendation and put this uh, particular uh, subject on the agenda for the fifth meeting on the fifteenth. Um, and those well, and we can consider additional names at that time. If we if we leave both uh, both Edward and Chip uh, as a potential potentially being on the list, if that's all right with both Shelby and and Tim, they'll give uh, them and uh, the rest of us the opportunity to think it over a little bit more, make contacts where we where we feel that's appropriate, and and we can uh, try to work through that at the. Uh, at the next at the next meeting. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Um, Madam Chair, then we have, or Madam uh, DFO, we have uh, the issue of uh, the annual report to Congress. Uh, 
I believe the first matter there is uh, the subcommittee, setting up a subcommittee so that uh, we might begin, the subcommittee might begin some work on, on this. We had uh, a number of committee members uh, pointed out that we couldn't we couldn't and didn't want to finish a report, and that I think it would be extremely difficult for us to do it in any case, midway through or, or a little more than halfway through the uh, the fiscal year. Uh, but uh, if we set up uh, the committee, then um, the committee can at least maybe get started doing doing some things, and depending upon who's on the committee, might be able to continue uh, through whatever kind of uh, um, situation we find ourselves in with uh, without enough members to actually hold the public one of the public meetings. So um, with that, uh, on my notes from last week suggested that Shelby volunteered, Tim volunteered, and Honor, I think, volunteered as well. Uh, I will add my name to that list as a potential member of the subcommittee or, or do uh, other review committee members have uh, other comments or uh, questions uh, about about this no so madam dfo do we need to do anything more than say we would like to establish uh, that list of four as a subcommittee to work on the uh, next annual report from the committee to the Congress. Um, we can we can certainly do that. Um, we can form that subcommittee of the four of you to work on a draft of the report to Congress. Okay. I don't know that we need to do anything more on that on that particular matter. Right. I mean, we've we we if set up a subcommittee. The subcommittee will put its head together and figure out uh, how we want to proceed. And uh, if we need to have a meeting, we'll work with you on getting the meeting set up and uh, deciding outline or topics or themes or or something. Certainly. And as in the past, if the subcommittee would like me to start the draft using last year's, I can do that as well. Whatever I can do to facilitate um, your process more efficiently, okay. I'd be happy Great. to do. That terrific. Do you, um, since we're talking about the annual report, um, do you have any word back or uh, any new information about uh, this committee sub report that we sent for what 2020 and 2021, proceeding okay. through the department? No, I have no updates. Okay. Can you get us one by next the next meeting if you're. Um, I can only tell you if I have heard that it's um, ready to be transmitted to Congress. Like, other than that, all I could tell you is that it's under uh, the departmental review process. Can you, by any chance, give us an idea of what office is looking at it currently or something like that? I don't believe I have access to that information. Could you check? I can ask and whether you have access, and then if you do have access, if you could just let us know where, where, how far down the pile it is, or how far up the pile it is that is being looked at. That would be appreciated. I will ask the person that knows. Okay, thank you. Anything else, review committee members, on uh, annual report to Congress? Does anybody else want to be on the subcommittee? You should ask that. Okay, we don't see anybody. Is there any other new business? Tim, do you have a comment? I think you're on mute, Tim. Tim, we can't hear you. You're, I think you've still got your mute. I have too many, I have too many screens open, sorry. <laughs> um, a piece of new business, and I think uh, I would like actually like some information at the next meeting if we could. Um, a notice for information collection related to NAGPRA compliance was published in the Federal Register this morning. 
with a deadline of comment of uh, April 11th, 2022. I note from the notice that the review of the background information provided to OMB estimated an annual number of responses of information provided to the Park Service uh, was 448. The amount of time needed to complete a response was varied from between a half an hour to 100 hours and a total annual burden of 4,470 hours and an annual dollar value of the burden hours was uh, uh, $192,806. What struck me is that these estimates stand in stark contrast to the $1.372 million of grant funding that was awarded to museums in FY 2021. So either the burden is grossly under, underestimated in what was provided to OMB, or grant money is being awarded for activities that are not required by the act. Uh, I was wondering if Melanie could provide us with a written response to this apparent discrepancy at our next meeting so that the committee can consider whether to weigh in on this matter with OMB. Um, and just for anyone's information, I've put in the chat the URL for the, um, the notice that was published in the register this morning and also to the um, OMB site that includes all of the information that was submitted as part of the um, certification process. Tim, what what kind of information and from whom is it is there is it expected to be requested or required? Um, from and this was a quick read on my part, looking through all of the <laughs> documentation, the um, four hundred and 48 responses fall into a variety of categories. Those are either new summaries or inventories or updated summaries or inventories and notices that were submitted to be published in the Federal Register and also notifications from museums to Indian tribes were counted. Um, and that the total for that was 448 instances. It also looks like there was interviewing that was done with, I think the initial sample was nine uh, different museums to sort of comment on the information collection. Uh, Melanie can correct me on the actual numbers. Um, and that some of them, most of them responded, but not all of them did. Um, I think the, the issue that sort of struck me was the difference between the estimated financial burden of this information collection in comparison to the grants. So that's kind of what I'm interested in getting an explanation for. Um, were agencies uh, requested as well, or is that not part of the OMB uh, information retrieval information? My, my understanding of this is this only applies to information that's obtained from non-federal entities. There's also estimates in there on the financial burden of the government in responding to these incoming documents. Um, Melanie, do you want to comment or maybe provide a little bit more information about why, why the, there's a new information uh, request, information requirement request? Certainly. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Mm -hmm. the, the dog is barking, so I... Um... <laughs> we can't hear the dog. Good. <laughs> Um, well, it's, um, it's, it's not a simple answer, but I can, I can begin an answer. I, I would hate to take up the committee's time or the, or the public's time um, in giving you an in-depth response on what the Information Collection and Public Records Acts require of federal agencies. But I can say in general uh, that every three years, the National NAGPRA program and the National Park Service must renew its uh, authority to collect information um, under the Public Records Act. And um, the information that the NAGPRA program collects uh, is authorized by the regulations. And so the information that is collected and what this uh, notice is, is 
discussing is the information that any private entity um, must submit to the federal government. So that's why updates to inventories or summaries, notices are all things that the regulations require museums submit to the federal government. So every three years, the National NAGPRA program and the National Park Service must reassess what information we are requesting as the federal government from private entities. That's what this notice is about. Um, the documentation that is of a particular note and, and the best source of information is the supporting statement A, which gives very in-depth information about what is reflected in the estimate, um, as well as, as Tim mentioned, the requirement to do a limited amount of outreach um, on the estimate uh, in, in an attempt to verify that information. Um, so that's what the notice is. This is the second notice in the process of, um, of an OMB uh, renewal of the regulatory information collection. The first notice was published um, a, a few months uh, earlier um, at the end of last year, I think it was November. Um, so that's what the document is that Tim is referencing and, and there is um, additional information attached to the notice itself that explains how we came to that estimate. Um, in terms of how this differs from the, from the work that's awarded. Uh, now we hear the dog. Yeah, he's right next to me now. Um, how this differs from the work that we're awarding through the grants uh, is uh, completely different. Um, grant projects revolve around generally consultation uh, between Indian tribes and museums or documentation of a collection for purposes of repatriation. Uh, but the grants themselves, um, while they may fund in part the information that is ultimately sent to the federal government, meaning that the outcome of a, of a grant might be a notice that's submitted. That is just one small piece of what the grant funds, which would largely be uh, the work to um, bring tribes to museums or for museums to travel to tribes for consultation for documentation of collections. Um, that is what we fund through the grant program and that that it's not captured uh, through this information collection information collection is about what's sent to the federal government. Um, so the end result of a grant might be a notice, it might be an updated inventory, but that's only one small piece of the work that the grant is funding. Um, and that's the small piece is all that's captured in this information collection. Okay. That was see, that was far too much and nobody really wants no, no, to know that, that much. That was, that was okay. um, so it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's continuing the information collection that's already been in, been in place, but it's, it's giving OMB an opportunity to, I guess, re-review your, yes, uh, every three uh, years we have to renew our ability okay. to get notices and updated inventories and summaries. So we go through this process every three years. Tim, do you or any other review committees have any other uh, questions on, on that on this particular matter? I actually would question whether um, the estimate that was provided to OMB actually captures all of the activities that are necessary for completing an inventory or completing a notice. Because um, the statute requires museums to consult as part of completion of the inventory. So the consulting costs are high, but they're part of the process. You have to do the consultation in order to do the inventory by law. So that's clearly a required activity. And there's a cost to that. So I'm not, I guess my concern is that the estimates that are provided have been provided to OMB are too low, that there's many more activities that are many more burdens and costs that are required of museums in order to comply in order to produce those documents that have not been captured by that submission. Okay. Well, again, I would point to the 
the difference um, between a new summary or inventory uh, that is in the supporting statement A and an update to an inventory or summary. As we all know, the NAGPRA process requires consultation, but uh, only in the development of that initial inventory. Uh, the updates to an inventory don't necessarily require consultation. Consultation is required before an inventory is complete. So that would explain the difference in the burden hours between a new inventory versus an updated inventory. That doesn't mean that many museums um, don't choose to consult, um, but again, the supporting statement A really looks at what uh, the burden is in terms of um, what the regulations require. Thanks. Thank you, Madam DFO. I, I'm, I also wanted to, to get at, Tim asked you for uh, some written information. I wasn't quite sure whether your, your verbal response provided the information that he wanted or whether there's still some written information that he was asking about. I can't really provide much more than what is in the supporting statement A in terms of what is what the estimate is and how it was derived. Yeah, I guess I would appreciate, um, and for next week, that's fine, um, a, more th a more thorough kind of review of why, um, why you've not included consultation costs in some of these, uh, which I think seems to me to be a required activity. On the flip side, by saying that some of these consultations are not required or not being included, in the figures that you're providing to OMB, that sort of raises the question of whether you're funding in the grants program activities that are not required to comply with the statute. So it's sort of the balance between these two figures of there should be more correlation between the burden of complying with this and what you're funding. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't believe that's accurate. I think uh, any, um, uh, any grantee would tell you about a number of consultations that results in identification of proper care, um, perhaps uh, traditional practices that need to be applied to um, collections or even how collections are stored or who handles them can be an integral part of consultation around NAGPRA prior to repatriation. That is not required by the statute. There is no requirement is, for, for certain- But it, uh, is, it is required by the regulations. Well, it's, <laughs> there's no requirement for a museum to, um, to, to, to conduct traditional care. Um, there is no requirement to wrap boxes in certain kinds of cloth. Uh, there is no requirement in the regulations for a museum to store certain collections in certain spaces or to pro prohibit certain staff from handling those collections. That none of that is required, yet that is quite often the result of a consultation and documentation grant. So I would disagree that there is a correlation here between what we fund um, through the grant program and the burden estimate for information collection um, requirements. If the committee though would like me to spend some time on this issue and provide you with a more extensive uh, review of what is required uh, in the reporting for information collection and the Public Records Act, I'd be happy to do that. I just, I'm not sure that's how the committee would like its time. Um, I would again point you to the supporting statement A. Uh, you can look back on the OMB website at every supporting statement A every three years that's published. Um, so you can compare estimates from the past with this estimate if you'd like. Um, and um, you know, in, in addition to that, I, I'd be happy to provide you with a list of project descriptions of how we, what we fund through the grant program. And, and I think you'll see through that project description list how different um, the, the projects that are conceived of and carried out through the NAGPRA grant program are than, than what is being estimated as an information collection under the OMB requirements. Okay, okay. Um, thank you, Madam DFO. And um, we have now exceeded our time for this meeting. So um, I think at this point we should, we should uh, 
close the meeting, um, proceed with what we've decided to do based uh, based upon the discussion. And uh, uh, Madam DFO, maybe you and I can talk about the agenda for the next meeting and make sure that we've got space and time for the different things that we talked about. Certainly. Okay. Uh, any last comments? If not, then I don't see any. Um, thank you all once again for a uh, um, important important meeting. I think we we accomplished some things here, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, continuing to work together on, uh, particularly on a review of the uh, uh, draft proposed regulations, but also on the re the uh, disposal requests and and things of that sort. So. The next meeting is Tuesday, just for okay. everyone's uh, I, I'm never quite sure whether, whether the chair adjourns these meetings or you do, Madam DSO. So. Why don't we do it together? Okay. The, this meeting, the meeting is, is adjourned. adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. See you in a few days. Not much rest this time. Take care.